what is up welcome back to my channel long time no talk so everyone's wanting to know what's gonna happen with YouTube what's the final verdict so unless you guys follow me on social media I did announce about a week a week and a half ago that YouTube actually had reached out to me so I kind of wanted to explain the events that unfolded because I had this on another video and then the video got removed so I just want to make sure everyone's caught up to date so initially what happened is the same weekend that my videos basically were removed temporarily and then I had about 10 videos that were completely permanently removed before the channel went down I had been reached out um, directly I was actually on like the creators studio on the admin side obviously so the side where we run it and all of a sudden this like little chat box popped up and they basically wanted me to take this quiz and they also sent me the same one inside of our like admin email that's connected to the YouTube channel. So basically it was YouTube asking me questions, am I happy, am I not happy, like they had heard that I was not happy with the way things were going, that there had been changes on my channel, and, and unfortunately there's no customer service to reach out to anyone on YouTube if you don't like how something's going or if you want something to change. There isn't like an 800 number you can call as a creator to get help. So I was shocked because this is really the first time I've heard of anyone uh, you know, like getting reached out to by someone, you know, in the higher ups of the YouTube command because normally it's just dead ends. You can you can send emails, but they never go anywhere. You don't know who they get to. So anyway, I was really honest in this little chat box and also in this um, basic quiz. And within hours, I had obviously posted the most recent video. This was two weeks ago. And all of a sudden, the channel went down and it disappeared and everyone had a freak out. Basically, the new video had been up for maybe an hour before the entire channel disappeared. I was trying to stay hopeful because I knew on one hand that it was probably a good thing because YouTube had reached out to me, I had expressed my concerns, you know, that it had now been considered a religious channel, that I was upset about all this stuff. So I was really hoping for a good outcome. So there is a good outcome. So this is where I kind of fast forward into a few weeks later on social media. Basically, I did have a discussion with YouTube. They have changed all of our stuff back on our channel. We've had a really big boost in subscribers and views, and I think that's them trying to help promote us because I was so upset by whatever was happening with the, I don't know if it's algorithms or how they were kind of sponsoring us. I did hear feedback from some of you guys. You've seen some ads on some of my videos, which is the first time in ever, which that's good. You know, AdSense, we do get paid out AdSense monthly. It is not much, but the ads are a good sign because that means they are helping promote the channel. Now, over the last few weeks, we have been closely watching analytics and I am happy to report that everything is not only back to normal, but it is better than it was previously. So the lesson here is, if you're upset with something, especially like a platform like I have, you need to speak out and you have to use your voice to stand up for what you believe is right. So in my case, I'm really happy that I, you know, used the opportunity to not only talk with you guys and have your feedback probably help this situation as well, but I was able to basically get things reversed on the channel and everything is better than normal on Ghost Girl Diaries YouTube channel. So what does that mean for the future? As of right now, we have made decisions to go ahead and continue to do weekly uploads on YouTube, but we have also decided to go ahead and integrate Vimo and Twitch as well. So how that's going to work is, Vimo, we will be doing the exact same uploads starting next week, they will be going onto Vimo, and the same upload will be going onto YouTube. 
This is to prevent any problems in the future so that I can continue to not only build a platform here on YouTube, but I can also continue to build a new platform on Vimo. That also saves me as a safety net so that if something again happens on YouTube where I feel like I have to back out as a creator, I will still have Vimo as an already processed platform that is you know a successful place for me to upload so i will say still go subscribe to vimo so it's ghost girl diaries it's free 100 percent free to make an account you just have to find ghost girl diaries and follow the channel so the next big question is everyone's asking what's going to happen with twitch i made such a big deal out of twitch and i'm going to be perfectly honest I have been working with Twitch now for a couple of weeks. I'm starting to get used to the interface of it. I have not done any streams yet, but working with Twitch makes YouTube seem ancient, which to me is exciting because you know, I like new technology, I like new social media. I know a lot of people out there are not familiar with Twitch. Thinking about going to another platform or switching platforms, even as just a viewer, it's very scary. So let's just clear a couple of things up when it comes to Twitch. First of all, a lot of people have a misconception that it costs money to join Twitch. That is wrong. And you do not need a credit card or a debit card to sign up for Twitch. They have something similar to YouTube Red, which is like a subscription service that you can actually enter. But Ghost Girl Diaries or my channel, which will be under Crystal Leandra, you have to search Crystal Leandra, we will not have that kind of subscriptions. There will be modifications that viewers can add on um, and basically you contribute if you want to you know, donate. The cool thing with the platform on Twitch is they believe in their creators actually making money off of what they, the content that they create. Where YouTube, when they make money off of ads that they run on our videos, they actually pocket 99.99% of the funds, unless you have millions and millions of followers. So I will still be doing Twitch. I'm going to be doing um, live feeds only on Twitch. So there will be no more YouTube lives and there will be many more frequent videos that will be live on Twitch. What kind of videos? I'm not really sure yet. Of course, there will be some paranormal discussions. If I have meet and greets, I'm probably going to have someone film it live on the Twitch platform where you'll only be able to view it on Twitch. I also think that I'll integrate some sort of video gaming. Um, I play Xbox 360, Xbox One, and World of Warcraft, as you guys know. So I've actually changed the guild name to Ghost Girl or I'm sorry, I think it's Ghost Girl Diaries Guild or something like that, Ghost Girl Horde, and then there will be Ghost Girl Alliance as well. So all that information will be shared once everybody gets to Twitch that wants to follow me on Twitch. The problem with Twitch is that you have to have so many hours in streaming live before you can become an affiliate content creator with Twitch. So the next few weeks, I'm going to be doing an abundance, an overabundance of streaming live because I have to. I basically have deadlines of how much time I have to get you know, X amount of hours into stream live. So normally I won't be streaming that many hours per week, but I have to catch this affiliate um, level basically by streaming so much within the first 30 days. So the first month I'm on Twitch, you're going to see me on there a lot. I actually don't mind that a lot of people don't want to come to Twitch or haven't yet come to Twitch because that means the audience there is gonna be much smaller, which means I get to interact with those of you that have followed me to Twitch more than any other platform, which makes me most excited. There's also been issues with Instagram. I have not uploaded to Instagram because the algorithms have gone berserk. So I have now created a new, it's basically like Instagram except better because you can you can also post like music feed. Um, it's amazing. Once again, so Vero is the new app. I've been using that. So find me on Vero, look up Crystal Leandro. You'll have to download it. As far as Twitch goes, you can download the app on your phone or your tablet. Um, and then you can also download the software on your computer and I believe there's also a way for you to stream it on your smart TV or you can cast it on your smart TV. I hate to tell you guys this, but I want you to get used to Twitch because I predict along with many other friends of mine that are in the YouTube creator community, not necessarily paranormal vloggers, but we all predict that eventually all of the creators will be moving to Twitch for the simple fact that the interface in Twitch 
is so 2018. It is ahead of its time, and unfortunately, it makes YouTube's interface look ancient. I mean, we have to be honest, YouTube's been around for over 10 years, and um, unfortunately, there's going to come a time where something new and better takes over, and I truly believe Twitch is and will be that platform. There are already so many celebrities and regular YouTubers that are starting to make their move to Twitch. So this is just me giving you guys a warning. There is no monthly subscription. There is no credit card or debit card required to sign up for it. Um, if you want to support your creators, not just me, there's actually ways to do that where YouTube does not give you those options. And I really think eventually everyone's going to go there. So if you're not familiar with the interface of Twitch or how to use it, your easiest key to figure out how to work it is YouTube. Look up some videos on YouTube on how to work Twitch. So in the meantime, I know a lot of you have been watching me on different social media platforms like Snapchat and Instagram Live. Lots of you guys are saying, Crystal, you haven't had your pink hair for a while. So unfortunately, the pink hair is going to have to go for a little bit. Um, a lot of people on social media have been comparing me to a WWE wrestler named Alexis Bliss or Alexa Bliss. I'm not sure what her name is. And unfortunately, I do not want to look like anyone else. So I took all the pink out of my hair, you know, and honestly, I've had that hair style, like hair color for like four years. I wanted to change it up a little bit and I definitely don't want to look like anyone else. You guys know I'm all about, you know, being your own person and, and doing individual things. So we're gonna stay away from the pink hair for a while. I hate to disappoint you guys. Another thing is, yes, weekly uploads should be back to normal. Obviously this week, next week, and ongoing with YouTube. I didn't really mean to like leave YouTube and then come back, but I had to use my voice and my platform to say this is not okay. And as content creators, we are not going to tolerate this. And obviously it made a change. So if anyone's out there, I know some of you guys just started YouTube, um, you know, channels and platforms and social media the biggest thing i can tell you is use your voice to speak out in your videos even if it's a little blurb about how disappointed you are with youtube and algorithms and the way that they're promoting and doing marketing and i promise you it will change if you use your voice in the meantime the biggest discussion i wanted to have was talking about the new trailer that dropped for the demon house it is coming out um, in a couple of weeks i'm so thrilled lots of you guys have been wanting to meet up with me for some sort of a meet and greet the night that the movie actually drops. I'll have to wait till it gets a little bit closer to decide what day I'm going. The movie actually drops the 16th, but a lot of times they will have a midnight showing on the 15th technically. So I would like to go to the earliest showing possible and uh, maybe I'll schedule another one for the following day. I know some of you guys said you would even drive in from like um, Arizona and California to see me. So that would be so much fun and I would love to do that. Of course, I will be doing a review for the demon house and I really honestly I really just wanted to give like a thorough genuine shout out to Zach because I understand how much work this really is making a movie is such a big deal and I know it was such a hard process for him so Zach I just want to say congratulations and I am just really really happy for you that you made such a great accomplishment in your production career. Now in the meantime a lot of you had questions about why it was only being distributed in like select cities I think 10 to 15 cities in the United States so I wanted to talk about that with you briefly. So the first thing is a lot of people say oh you know pre-production of a movie is actually complicated which we've covered that so I'm not going to go into detail but pre-production is things like planning where you're going to shoot how you're going to shoot is it a documentary do we need storyboards that kind of thing how many camera techs do we need how many investigators are we going to need on set and then production is actually going to the location right so in Zach's case they go to Gary Indiana um, they're on location with the house he sounds very much like he's went in as a skeptic debunking you know, this demon house, which that's not a side of Zach that we see very often. So I'm very excited to see this movie for that reason alone. So production is actually being there. You're hands on, you're doing the filming, you're interviewing the police in their case and the nurses and um, the, you know, child advocates that they say were involved. Post-production is all of the editing. How are we going to put this together? Why are we putting it together this way? And obviously the ghost hunt review for the editing is very, very complicated. So you would think one of those sections, either pre-production, production, or post-production would be the most complicated. Actually, the most complicated part with a movie is the distribution part. So distribution for certain directors like 
um, Woody Allen or Tim Burton. Distribution for them is very easy because they are known for the work that they possess. As far as Tim Burton goes, we are familiar with The Corpse Bride, we're familiar with The Nightmare Before Christmas, even Edward Scissorhands. Now with that being said, when Tim Burton goes to distribute some big movie that he's done, distributors, which means either DVD companies, streaming networks like Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, or actually putting it on a DVD and selling it, those are distributors. They'll be like, well, we know Tim Burton, we know his work, we're going to distribute X amount, it's going to go in X amount of theaters, and he's going to get paid X amount. Unfortunately, with someone like Zach, he hasn't done big movies. He did do Sympathy Said the Shark. Um, obviously, the very first Ghost um, Adventures documentary came out and it was done through a film festival, which is the proper way to do it. But now if he's trying to actually sell this documentary, The Demon House, and get it into theaters, it's, it's a complicated process. Now that he's actually done episodic television for so many years, he isn't really known to the distributor companies as being this big director that will have a, you know, no hands down sort of flop is what they're concerned about. The biggest issue that distributors are afraid of is they're going to buy a movie or purchase a movie and it's going to be a really big downfall and not many people will actually go to see it in the theaters. So if you ask me, that was probably the hardest part of negotiations for Zach was actually finding distributors to take in the Demon House and then distribute it. So the best thing that I can tell you guys is any of us that are actually able to see the Demon House in our cities. So the, so the cities that it's releasing on March 16th is Chicago, Vegas, Cleveland, Dallas, Fort Worth, Denver, Detroit, Los Angeles, Minneapolis, St. Paul, Phoenix, Tampa, and more cities to be announced soon. So the best thing you can do if you're wanting to support Zach and the success of the film is go see it more than once. Go see it twice, maybe even three times. It is supposed to be digitally released. I'm not sure what that means, if that means it's demand, on demand, or if it's going to be on something like Netflix or Hulu, but I do believe right around the same time it's going to be digitally released. But it still doesn't take away the experience of seeing it on the big screen inside of a theater. So for those of us that get to see it in person, let's try to support Zach and go see it as many times as we can. So of course I will be back with a review. I can't wait. I'm happy to be back. I did take a little bit of time off just to kind of breathe and readjust myself. I know a lot of you were like concerned that I had burned out, which I'm going to be honest, I had. By the time YouTube had taken down my full channel, I was in such a panic that I didn't know what to do. I felt really lost. So I'm back to YouTube as long as you guys want me to be here. So make sure you guys subscribe to my channel. Make sure you give my video a thumbs up. Make sure you guys follow me on social media and I will catch you guys next week. One last thing I forgot to say. How many of you guys are going to actually go see The Demon House? Are you going to go see it in theaters? Because I can't wait to see it. Okay, catch you guys next week. I'm not still recording. I shut it off. Oh. Oops.